all his troops out. There's certainly there's insiders and elites that are probably unlikely have come to that conclusion, but they're not going to say that publicly. I think Putin is going to stay in the fight because he realizes his survival and his regime's survival is tied to it. So that's General Jack Keane doing some instant analysis on the fast-developing news over the weekend, but there's nobody better in the country to talk to than who's in our studio right now. If you're smart enough to get Fox Nation, you see the former Secretary of State, the 66th Secretary of State of the United States, Condoleezza Rice. Uh, now she's running everything at the Hoover Institute and a senior fellow on public policy. Great to see you. Nice to see you, too. It was so right? nice of you to give us some time, and yeah. how fortuitous for me that yeah. this what Russia... A, what a day. Oh right? my, yes. Out of everything that you've studied, you, you're a... That was your focus in college and your yeah. master's, Soviet, Soviet Union. Right. And then it fell apart and made it a little bit more challenging. <laughs> so your thoughts about what took place over the weekend, the biggest surprise for you? Well, the biggest surprise for me is that uh, if our intelligence agencies knew something was brewing among the Wagner group, and apparently we did, then the Russians must have known, too, that something was brewing. They have moles inside of all of these groups. Why didn't they do something to head it off? Why did it get to the point that you had Prigozhin on social media and on television talking about marching on Moscow? And how bad a war this and is how bad and how there are no Nazis here. Right. Well, that's probably the most, most damaging thing that he did is Putin has had this uh, narrative that this is a just and necessary war because of the West and the Nazis in Ukraine and so forth. And Prigozhin, one of his closest allies, just blew that up and said, no, we could have negotiated with our brothers in Ukraine. Uh, we didn't have to lose all of these people. And now Putin needs to answer for that, too, because that's been an unspoken uh, view all around Moscow. Uh, Putin started this war thinking it would be over in five days. It would never touch the lives of people in Moscow. It's touching the lives of people in Moscow big time now. And uh, he hasn't been able to uh, now hold on to this fiction that this right. was a just war. And don't you think, uh, Madam Secretary, that if Vladimir Putin wanted to show strength and could, he would. We haven't seen him since Saturday morning. He went to St. Petersburg when the attack took place. And then he goes, now today, we're, we're looking at Monday, time zone adjusted, nothing. We just have some statement put out that a couple of countries still recognize Vladimir Putin, a, 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 a missive of support. From China, you've met him. Yeah. yeah. Would you? How would you characterize what the guy you know from how he's acting? Well, he has always been, or had always been, confident. He wanted to have an air of invincibility. Uh, he was the only option uh, for the Russian people, and this is an incredibly weak response. Uh, first of all, to make the deal after you've said that this was treason, uh, you were going to uh, have these criminals pay, et cetera, et cetera, and then you make a deal to let. Uh, uh, Prigozhin go to, to Belarus. By the way, if I were Prigozhin, I'd be careful about open windows, and I'd be careful about uh, anything that might taste slightly metallic. He, uh, Putin will not, I think, let uh, Prigozhin uh, live for terribly long because he remains a threat as long as he's alive. But the other thing that I have to say about this is, uh, yes, where where is Putin? I suspect they're trying to get their act together. They're trying to figure out what is the explanation for having made this deal. But the longer that he doesn't speak to it, the more social media right. and the the chatter in Moscow uh, is really uh, overwhelming everything. And he's losing control of the narrative. And now. I'm sure you saw how, he, how the Wagner group was achieved in Roscoff. And then through the towns, as they just move through all yeah. of them, they shoot down three choppers right. and they just stop uh, 175 or 200 miles from uh, from Moscow. So we, we know that already. But my sense is this. If he does go to Belarus, I'm sure he's got his guys with him to a degree, don't you think? I'm sure he does. But <clears throat> Vladimir Putin has shown the incredible ability to uh, hunt down his uh, enemies. And so I think he will. Be, I, I just but can't believe. the best believe... guys in the country seem to be on the Wagner group. Well, the Wagner group is spread out around the world, remember. They've got people in Syria. They've got people in, in Africa. Africa. And so uh, a lot of these uh, Wagner Group folks who were fighting, uh, soldiers who were fighting in Ukraine were prisoners who were taken out of the prisons and put right. forward. They're fierce and they are brutal. But how good they are, I don't know. I just, I just think that for Putin, uh, this is uh, chapter one. He effectively lost chapter one. Now he's got to figure out how he uh, wins the next one. And here I completely agree with Joaquin. The last thing he can do is say, well, yes, they're right. The war in Ukraine was a mistake. Ukraine, Ukraine war now is 
the war that could make him Nicholas I. Now, who was Nicholas I? He was the Tsar that lost the Crimean War and started the downward slide of the Russian Empire. And so uh, with all of his history, and right. he is a history buff, with all of his history in his mind, you know, Brian, he once told me, uh, <clears throat> the only time Russia has been great is when it's been ruled by great men like Peter the Great and Alexander II. That's who he thought he was. Uh, he's in great danger now of just being a failed czar, and uh, that's got to worry him. It, it does. Sometimes I think, you know, he looks back. He was part of the G7, G8. He was part of the family of nations. People were trying to get him going economically. You know, look at Bill Browder. It was just with Hermitage Capital. Mm-hmm. They killed McGinsky and all these things. He goes, yeah, we were all over there making money. We thought they they did. Right. were making a sincere effort towards a degree of capitalism. Right. At one point. Please join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the McCad TV family. Please like and share McCad TV. We love you all. Please support McCad TV Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.